What we're going to take a look at today is the Jungsung JA1 preamplifier and the matching JA99C amplifier. This gear has been around for decades, yet given its current pricing, it may represent one of the better values in hi-fi right now. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, so to kick off this review, I want to give you all a better understanding as to who Youngsung is and what they're all about. So this is a company that I became interested in all the way back in the early to mid 2000s because that's when I got into audio and at the time, the market was full of Chinese gear. And while some of it was actually very good, a lot of it was, well, rather trashy. But Young Song was always that exception to the rule. They're always seen as this quality solution out of China. In fact, through the years, I've read tons of reviews under components, and almost every single review, whether it's by a consumer or a professional reviewer, has been positive. So when I had the opportunity to bring in this gear for review, of course I said yes, and I immediately got to work on researching the company's history. And what I found was that this company was founded in the early 90s by two individuals. And these people basically said, hey, look, we want to start a company, we want to build high quality audio solutions, and we want to be a proud Chinese manufacturer. We're not going to be building this to the lowest bidder. And what they did is they came out with the stack that I'm reviewing only a couple years later. And what's cool about that is while it's been improved through time, it's nice to know that by and large, the circuits in this gear should be pretty bulletproof by this point. Anyways, 30 years, business actually treated them well. In fact, I would say in the mid 2000s, they were doing very, very well. This was at the height of consumers buying Chinese audio products. But in 2009, tragedy struck the company, which is when one of the co-founders passed away in a car accident. And unfortunately, time wasn't very kind to Jungsung because not long afterwards, the market for Chinese gear just fell off a cliff. Nobody really wanted the stuff anymore. They weren't selling gear. And in fact, it seemed like they just disappeared off of the radar up until this importer, China Hi-Fi, reached out to me. And I asked them point blank. I was like, okay, number one, is the company even around anymore? And they said, yes. So they're focusing primarily on OEM parts, right? So they basically build stuff for other people. That's how they pay their bills. But the company itself is still around. The next question I had is, well, how much inventory do you have? Are you just trying to send me this stuff because you're hoping a zero fidelity review is going to sell excess inventory? And the answer is no, actually, they barely have anything made. So anybody who orders this stuff, or at least most of the people, Jung Sung is actually going to have to build each component per order. All right. So then lastly, there is the price because historically speaking, the gear has always been sold for anywhere between two to three thousand dollars, three thousand being the average price for both of these components. But right now they're being sold for a lot less than that. And I wanted to make sure that this is exactly what this company wants, right? Because it's like, dude, once you sell it for that low of a price, that brand equity is just going to plummet. Is that what they want? And I was told that, yep, this company no longer wants to have anything to do with hi-fi margins. They're willing to accept low margins. So yeah, that price is really what they want to sell it for. Okay, well, since that's the case, that will lead me to the components under this review. Let's talk about them. God, what a horrible transition. All right, so here it is, the Young Sung stack. And before we begin, yes, I realize I'm probably mispronouncing the name and no, I don't care because I'm American and plus nobody told me how to pronounce it correctly before this review. So we are just gonna have to live with it. Anyways, up top, we are gonna have our class A natively balanced preamplifier. It retails for $499. And you have to bear in mind that this stack has been in production since the late 90s, meaning it's not going to come with fancy features like Wi-Fi streaming and a built-in DAC or even a built-in phono stage. I mean, this is just going to be a purest piece. And it's very well made. The front panel here is brushed aluminum. We're going to have a nice stainless steel for the rest of the chassis. Up front, we're going to have our digital display touch sensitive volume controls, a mute button, a mode button. And beneath that, we are gonna have our beastly power amplifier that weighs around 73 pounds. It has the same build quality. We're gonna have our 
brushed aluminum panel on the front, our aluminum heat sinks on the side, our VU meters on the front, and I believe they call that blue a lake blue. With this stack, you also get a remote control. This is going to be a metal remote control. It has the same basic functions as the front of the preamp panel. And what's cool about it is to change the batteries, this is actually magnetically held down. So you just flip it open, change the batteries, and away you go. The stack, it's also worth noting. I think I forgot to mention the price of the amp. So the price of the amp is $899 by itself. But when you buy it as a stack, they'll give you a $100 discount, which makes the total price $1,298. Now bear in mind, you will have to pay shipping and taxes and import fees into your country. So I think most people are gonna be into this for anywhere between $1,500 to $1,600. It just depends on your country. But still, that's not a bad deal. And I also forgot to mention that the stack comes with these balance cables, which are actually pretty nice. They use Nutric connectors and I'm actually a big fan of that. So anyways, that is gonna be the front of the gear. Before we move on though, I'm sure you want to see this turned on. The power switch is going to be on the underside, on the right side of this. There we go, I found my words. There you go, it's on. And then for the power amplifier, same thing. And let there be blue light. Anyways guys, that's it for the front of the stack. Now let's take a quick look at the back. So here's the back of the stack, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at the preamplifier first. To our left, we are gonna have the IEC inlet for the power cord, and it's important to note that when you order this from China, make sure to specify what your voltage is going to be for your local power grid. As you can see right here, I am gonna be 110, but you're gonna be able to choose that from a drop-down menu on their website. We have a label here. We're going to have our balanced output. Remember, this is a natively balanced circuit, so that's where you're going to get the best performance out of this piece. We have a number of RCA inputs. We actually even have an RCA output if you want to connect the subwoofer to it. And then, we, of course, we have our balanced inputs. On the bottom here, we're going to have our amplifier. We have our balanced inputs, our single-ended inputs, and our speaker terminals that are fairly well made our IEC plug right in the middle of the amp for our power cord. And overall guys, that is it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look in the inside and then I'm gonna talk about how it all sounds. All right, so here it is, the natively balanced preamplifier. And right away, this thing looks really, really good for the money. In fact, the first thing that stands out to me is that it looks like it uses a dual mono design. The output transformers are housed inside this metal case here, which is great for shielding. You really don't find something like this too often at uh, this affordable price point. We have our input section here that looks really beefy. We have our signal relays. And I'm guessing this means that this uses stepped attenuation. And what's cool about that is it's gonna have a lower noise floor than your typical potentiometer. And plus, it's not gonna be prone to oxidation over the years, which results in that kind of scratchy sound as preamplifiers age. Pretty cool stuff. This is gonna be our balanced and single-ended connections. And overall, it looks very good. So now let's take a look at the amplifier. All right, so now it's time to look on the inside of this beastly amplifier. And the fact that you can pick all of this up for under $1,000 new is just incredible to me. Anyways, to our left, we have our 900 volt iron core transformer. She's a big one. And to our right, we're gonna have our filter capacitance bank, which totals to 160,000 microfarads of filter capacitance, which is crazy for something at this price. We have our aluminum heat sinks on either side. We have our transistors and your typical push-pull configuration. And one of the things I need to comment on about this amplifier is this power rating. So it's rated at outputting 80 watts of Class A power. But if I had to be honest with you guys, I'm a little bit suspicious of that rating just because 80 watts of Class A power would require something even more beastly than what you're looking at right here. So I did some research and what I found was interesting. Number one, the schematics for this amplifier are available online. And then number two, people have already measured this amplifier and the results are pretty interesting. So on one hand, as suspected, it's class A power is only good for about 12 watts, which is fine. I mean, look, when most of us listen to music, that's the kind of power that we're using up anyways. But on the other hand, it seems like it's actually more powerful than its rating because people found that it'll output 120 watts per channel instead of just 80. Anyways, guys, that's just what I found. I can't verify this to be 100% true, but it does match my listening impressions, and that leads me to how this combo sounds. 
Let's talk about it. All right, so it's finally time to go over how this combination actually performs. First, I'm gonna summarize the performance envelope for you, and then I'm gonna hit upon a couple points I'm sure some of you are curious about. Namely, if I feel like the stack is a giant killer, and then to go over how it compares to other gear within the same general price range. But first, let's talk about the sound. So I feel like when most people listen to this stack, they're gonna notice two things, the power and the mid-range. First, let's talk about the power. It's not just the fact that this is a very powerful sounding combination. I mean, you can look at it and kind of tell. It's how it delivers that power. It has a fullness and density and muscularity to the sound that you just don't find with most gear at this price point. Speaking of power, I feel like it's gonna be good enough for most of you. Pretty much everybody short of somebody who has a big room, inefficient speakers to drive, and you wanna listen at rocket ship level volumes. For everybody else, this should be good enough. And then let's talk about the mid-range. You would think that a combination like this would have a big warm sounding mid-range, but what it actually has is a big forward sounding mid-range. It projects sound in a very forward way within the mid-range, and this gives you a sense of presence, immediacy, and detail, within the mid-range at least, that you're not going to find from most gear, again, at this price point. Otherwise, though, the rest of the presentation is actually fairly neutral. The top end is an input-output situation as well as the base. It's just the mid-range that has that coloration. And that leads me to the individual elements of the presentation, starting with the treble. So as I just mentioned, it is mostly neutral. Now, I say mostly because I feel like it is tipped up just a little bit, but not in any meaningful way. In other words, if you have forward-sounding speakers, they're still going to sound forward on this stack. If you have rolled off sounding speakers, they're still gonna sound rolled off on the stack. Maybe it'll liven up the sound just a little bit, but by and large, it's just gonna be a reflection of the recordings that you're listening to and the gear that you have hooked up to it. Of course, it's also gonna deliver on all the audio file things that you want, spatial separation, good detail, it has all that, but what you really need to know is that it's input output. Now let's talk about that mid-range. So obviously the mid-range is the star of the show. It's huge, it's present, it's more or less in your face, and it gives the music a sense of excitement and layers really that, again, you just don't find from too many components at this price point. And if this is your first time experiencing something like this, you're definitely in for a treat. Now let's talk about the bass. So the bass, as mentioned earlier, is input-output. This is not the kind of stack you buy if you wanna make your small speakers sound bigger than what they are. Instead, the bass that you get, do get is gonna be more of a reflection of the recordings and the speakers that you listen to. For example, if you have big full range speakers, then the bass is gonna be very strong and it's gonna be just as quick and as capable as your speakers are. But if you're running small speakers, the bass is gonna be more or less limited to whatever that speaker is capable of outputting. So for people who want this warm, fat sounding low end, that may be something of a disappointment, but for people who value quality over quantity, then actually this is gonna be a very welcome thing. When it comes to dynamics, of course, dynamics is gonna be very good. I mean, yes, when you get more expensive gear, you're gonna get something that's capable of delivering superior micro and macro dynamics, but by and large, I think most people for this kind of money are gonna be fine with it. Noise floor. Noise floor is good. I would say that unless you're running super efficient speakers like say Klipsch Heritage or maybe the RF73s or something like that, you will likely not notice any kind of noise coming from the drivers, particularly the tweeter. But if you are running super efficient speakers, then yes, you may notice just a little bit of hiss coming from them. Mechanical noise floor is gonna depend on your own power grid, so I can't comment on that. It seems good in my room. Let's see, what else? Uh, imaging, so imaging is more of a function of the room and the loudspeakers, but I'll say this, the stack doesn't seem to take away or add anything to the signal in that regard. So what you experience in that sense is gonna be more of an accurate reflection of what your speakers are capable of doing. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be about it. I mean, this is a really good overall performing stack. So now it's time to talk about how it compares to other gear and if it's really and truly a giant killer. Okay, so let's start this off by addressing the elephant in the room, which is this. Do I feel like the Zhengsung stack is a giant killer? By which I mean components that can compete evenly or even better than other gear that costs a lot more money. Well, I'd say the answer is 
it depends on what your reference points are. For example, when I compared the Junksung gear to the Parasound JC2BP JC5 combination, which retails for over $10,000, yeah, it wasn't really much of a competition. The Parasound gear was hands down better in just about every way except for maybe the mid range. I could see some people preferring the more forward mid range on the Junksung stack over the warmer, neutralish mid range of the Parasound gear, but otherwise, no. It didn't really take them on. However, when you compare this stack to other gear, let's say in the three to four thousand dollar range, that's where I think the Junksung holds its own very well, which isn't too surprising because historically that's where it's been priced for decades now. Now, when it comes to gear beneath the two thousand dollar price point, which is more in its own wheelhouse, that's where I think this gear really shines and serves as an incredible value because I don't really know of anything under two G's that has the same kind of performance as this stack. It doesn't matter if you use a Rega or a Job or a name, Exposure, Heed, Denon, Morantz. I mean, unless there's something very particular that you're looking for, I think in the overall sense, the Junksung stack is one of the best deals out there today. Now, what's interesting is when you compare it to other Chinese gear, especially other Chinese gear for just a little bit more money, like the Dina Fripps, Hestia, and Hyperion combination. That stack retails for just over $2,000. I think it's like $2,300 to $2,400. And in some ways, that stack is better. It offers more refinement. It has a warmer presentation. I mean, no, it doesn't have that sense of scale and power by any means, but it's more of the cleaner, more audiophile solution. And I could see some people, to even include myself, preferring that over the less expensive Junksung stack. So it all, of course, just depends on what you want. Now, of course, it's time to talk about how it pairs up to different speakers. So let's talk about that. Okay, so when it comes to speaker matching, there's two points that I want to hit on. The first is that it should pair up well to a wide variety of speakers. Number one, it's powerful enough to drive most speakers pretty easily. And then number two, the voicing is neutral enough to where it should lend itself to, again, a wide variety of speakers. Now, in my opinion, it sounds best with speakers that have more of a neutral and or rolled off and warm sound. Because when you combine the two, what you get is the best of both worlds. You get an open, lively, yet at the same time, warm and full bodied presentation. I feel like like this gear would make a great match with Magnapans, and I also feel like it's a really tempting match for people who already have speakers like Klipsch or JBL. You know that you like that live forward presentation and you just want more of it. You just want to maximize that type of listening experience. Well, in that case, this combination is going to be fantastic. Now, what I think it's not too fantastic with are speakers that already have a somewhat forward mid range and a forward top end. And that's where I feel like the combination is just too much of a good thing. And now let's move on to the second point which is what kind of loudspeakers should you pair these two in terms of price? Well, to me, the absolute upper limit is going to be around $5,000. I think beyond that point, that's where your speakers are going to outperform the gear that you have it connected to. But anywhere under that, especially I would say $3,000 or less, is going to be a nice sweet spot for the Junksung stack. Anyways, guys, there's a lot going for this stack, but clearly it's not going to be perfect. So let's go over those caveats right now. Okay, so at this point in the review, you should have a good idea as to whether or not these components genuinely interest you. And if they do, here are four things that you need to be aware of before you spend your hard earned money. Starting with the first point, the blue light on the amplifier may be cool, but you can't dim it, nor can you turn it off, which may be a deal killer for those of you who like to listen late at night. Next, speaking of the amplifier, it generates heat. No, not the kind of heat that you would get out of an 80 watt class A amplifier, because this amp probably doesn't output 80 watts of class A power, but you nonetheless need to give it room to breathe in order to enjoy safe operation, which means don't put a preamplifier on top of it, don't put it in an enclosed space. Instead, you need to give it a good six to eight inches worth of room in order to enjoy proper ventilation and heat dissipation. And now let's talk about service and support. So those of us in North America are lucky. Apparently there's a tech who's authorized and qualified to work on this gear, meaning that if you have an issue with it while it's under warranty, China Hi-Fi will have it shipped to this tech, they'll work on it, and then they'll send it back to you, hopefully in working condition. However, to those of you outside of North America, I have no idea what the protocol is. You may need to reach out to China Hi-Fi to figure out what they can do for you, if anything. And that leads me to reliability. Look guys, 
the price of this gear is so low that you borderline couldn't build it for less. Now I call that a too good to be true deal and you know what they say about that. And a good example is the VU meters on my review sample for the amplifier, they don't work. And if I paid money for this, yeah, I'd definitely be bothered by it. But I know some of you out there would absolutely rage. Don't be one of those people who go online to complain about your too good to be true deal not working out perfectly as expected. So this is one of those buyer beware situations. And this is really the case with all gear that comes out of China under this importer business model, but it's especially important to take in mind whenever we're talking about components that weigh as much as these do. Anyways, having said all of that, let's wrap up this review. So to wrap this up, I feel like the Xiongsung stack is like a disruptor in the world of affordable-ish hi-fi electronics in the sense that rarely ever can I think of another time to where you can buy components at a price to where it feels like you couldn't even build it for much less. And then you look at the performance of what you get, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, if you're shopping for anything at around $1,500 or below, I would find it difficult not to very seriously consider this preamp amp combination, especially if you have the room to accommodate it in your home. But on the other hand, there's a risk. The reason why the price is so low is because the margins are very, very thin and because quite frankly, they don't have any local support in most countries and support costs a lot of money. So this is one of those scenarios to where you just have to roll the dice and take a risk. And if you end up rolling the dice and you love the sound and it works for you for many years, then congratulations, you just got a freaking steal for your money. Anyways, guys, that is going to be it for this review. Because I covered every single base that I can think of, there's going to be no bonus section, so this is it. As always, I appreciate you watching, and until next time, peace.